All right. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our 13th Fluorescent Friday event. My name is Dr. Lina Cárdenas, and I'll be your host today. I am an assistant professor at the School of Design at the Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile. Before we begin, I would like you to keep your camera off and mic muted during the event. Thanks. Please use the chat box to tell us who you are, where you're from, and where is your affiliation uh, with a university, company, or another organization. The Intersociety Color Council created Fluorescent Fridays as a global platform for university students from all disciplines to network with color professionals and fellow students, and to share a state-of-the-art resources about color role in our lives and applications in the world. If you're interested in getting involved, please check our website to join our mailing list and learn about the benefits of becoming a member. We welcome you to join us. Uh, today's event is titled Local Color Chart of Valdivia, Southern Chile, Color, Harmony and Contrast. During the program, we will hear about the projects Los Rios and Colores carry out in the south of Chile with the aim of creating a color chart from the study of the colors of its nature, the skies, seas, rivers, forests, flowers, trees, stones, and soils. Our timeline is 75 minutes. After the presentations, there will be a panel discussion and a session of questions and answers, moderated by Luan Stone, sorry, and myself. We encourage you to type your questions in the chat box during the presentation so your questions can be addressed to the speakers during the panel discussion. Our first guest is Elisa Cordero Hat. She's a graphic designer, master's in education, and a full-time academic and researcher at the School of Design Faculty of Architecture and Arts at the Universidad Austral de Chile. She has participated in national and international creative and research projects on color in architectural and landscape. As director and collaborator, she has published books, and articles on the subject. Currently, she is the president of the Chilean Colors Association, a member of the Environmental Color Design Group of the International Color Association, and was distinguished in 2019 with the Woman and Landscape Seal by the Chilean College of Architects. Elisa, welcome to Fluorescent Fridays. The screen is yours. Thank you, Lina. I will share my screen. So, can you see it? Yes? Yes. Okay, thank you. Hello, my name is Elisa Cordero Yar. I'm a graphic designer and professor at the School of Design in the at the Universidad Austral de Chile. Today, we are going to present the project Los Rios en Colores. Los Rios means the rivers, and it is the name of the region where we live. This name is very appropriate as our region has 63 rivers. The presenters are Ingrid Calvo, designer and color consultant, Catalina Garcia, a recent graduate in design from our, our university, the students Florencia, Diego, Agurto, and Genesis Alvarado from the third and fourth, fourth year of design of the design program at our, our university, and me, the coordinator of the project. All of us live in the region of Los Rios, except Ingrid, who lives in Milan, Ita Italy. Valdivia is a city in southern Chile. It has around 160, 
thousands inhabitants. The Austral University is located on an island called Isla Teja. There you will find the School of Design, as well as other programs such as architecture, medicine, law, forestry engineering, agronomy, and more. As you can see, our university is bordered by two rivers, has a beautiful botanical garden, and streets lined with old trees and well-maintained gardens. Our School of Design opened it in 2018, so it's only seven years old, making it a very young school. We have only 200 students who come from all over the country to study here, although the majority are from the South. In these pictures, we see some of them working on the course Color, Harmony and Contrasts, doing analog exercises by hand, but also on computers. Of course, they also enjoy a good break with friends in the shade of trees, of the trees. On this other picture, we can see the students conducting a color exercise with elements from nature that they collected in the botanical garden. They brought them uh, many flowers, leaves, and other natural elements. And in the classroom, they had to find paper samples of the same color as the elements they brought. It was an intense task that allowed them to assemble a small color chart of the, for the course, which, which we later used to create simple color palettes. At the School of Design, various areas of design are taught. Students can experiment with tools and materials such as metal, wood, plastic, textiles, and others. They also delve into graphic design pieces like posters, books, and other graphic compositions where they explore with paper, typography, colors, drawing, engraving, and more. Well, the idea behind the project Los Rios en Colores, uh, Los Rios in Colors, originated from a reflection on the relationship between the colors present in the color charts of the company Cerecita, as you can read there, and the chromatic identity of the Valdivia region, region and Chile in general. The initiative arose while teaching color at the School of Architecture many years ago, and noticing that these charts had all their names in English, indicating that they were imported from the United States. This observation led to questioning how these charts were created, what their inspiration was, and what logic was behind the selection of these colors. Oh, truly, I'm sorry. <laughs> While working on projects with, two, with uh, students, the question arose about the relationship between the colors of these charts and the colors of Valdivia and Chile as a whole. This concern drove the Los Rios in Colors project, which seeks to explore and represent the authentic and distinctive colors of the Los Rios region, highlighting its identity and connection with the local, natural, and cultural environment. So the idea came up to create a color palette that reflected the, the uniqueness of our region. For example, by measuring and encoding the color of a Chilean flower in a recognized and universal color system, we could, we could identify a shade of red and another of purple. This identified red tone could be used, for, in, for instance, in designing a chair, while the purple could be employed to paint a wall. Similarly, we could apply the same approach to the yellow color of this beautiful yellow tree. If we could measure and encode it in a universal system, it could be used, for example, in designing, designing a web page. As such, 
we resolved to embark on a project that we presented to the Ministry of Arts, Cultures and Heritage of Chile. In March 2023, we secured funding of $23,000 to bring our vision to life under the title, title Los Rios en Colores through the collaboration of the Austral University and private contributors, nearly $10,000 was arise, was rise, also raised, culminating in a total of over $32,000 for the project. The items we committed to in the project include a color chart derived from the natural elements found throughout every corner of the region. 40 color palettes developed based on this chart. 40 watercolors paintings capturing the atmospheric hues of the landscape. An exhibition showcasing these colors in an art, in an art gallery, a website and a catalog. Where did we carry out the project? We conducted it in Los Rios region, located in southern Chile, encompassing 12 municipalities, a half of which bear indigenous, indigenous Mapuche names, Corral, Futrono, La Unión, Lago Ranco, Lanco, Los Lagos, Mafil, Mariquina, Payaco, Pangipulli, Rio Bueno, and Valdivia. We visited each of these municipalities to collect colors. The Los Rios region has exceptional landscapes that span from the ocean to the mountains, 63 rivers, 11 lakes, different types of vegetation, soils and skies that change their, their brightness all, even for one day. This extraordinary geography and landscapes endow the region with a typical chromatic atmosphere resulting from, uh, from the interplay among all these colors and lights. The Los Rios region's landscapes are defined firstly, firstly by its temperate rainy climate without dry periods and water surplus. Secondly, by its geomorphology characterized for being particularly mountainous with the Andes, Andes mountain range, the coastal mountain range, and the Loncoche Massif. This latter chain crosses the region between both mountain range from the region's north border to the south. Certainly, another major feature of its landscape are its numerous and extensive rivers, large lakes, and other water bodies. This feature makes it into the region with the largest share of land occupied by water bodies in Chile. Water bodies are complemented with other watery landscapes, such as wetlands, snow, and glaciers. The Los Rios region is the scene of several natural, geological, and hydrometeorological hazards, such as earthquakes, tidal waves, volcanic eruptions, lake and river flooding, and landslides of different magnitudes, among others. Examples include the earthquakes of 1960, the world's most powerful earthquake in recorded his history, which caused, caused the sinking of the coastal area and the subsequent development of extensive wetlands and the powerful volcanic eruption in the winter of 2011 that you can see here in this picture. We planned our fieldwork by studying a paper map of the region and utilize, utilizing using Google Earth to identify in advance the specific location where we would gather colors. This process was informed by the expertise of a geographer and a forestry engineer who possessed knowledge of the most significant sites from both forestry and geographical perspective. Naturally, we also allowed ourselves 
to be captivated by unexpected colors encountered along the way, such as remarkably blossom, blossoming trees, wonderful colored bodies of water, or rain-laden dark skies that compelled us to pause and observe. We traversed the region by car throughout all four seasons of the year, spring, summer, autumn, and winter, gathering the distinctive colors characteristic of each season. In this region, evergreen trees, which never shed their leaves, coexist with those that, that transform into hues of gold, orange, and yellow during autumn, only to become bare afterwards. The interdisciplinary team collaborating on this project comprises academics, professionals, and students from the Austral University of Chile. Allow me to introduce them. Victor, a forestry engineer, Carlos and Carlos, a geographer, were responsible, responsible, uh, responsible for guiding the field work and developing a part of the data collection methodology. Erendira, a graphic designer, oversaw the photographic and graphic products of the project. Ingrid Calvo Ivanovic, a designer and color consultant, assisted us in designing the color palettes. Camila, a designer, manages the updating of social media channels in both Spanish and English. Catalina served as laboratory assistant, and Andrea ensures the project funds are allocated thoughtfully. We embarked on over 20 field expeditions throughout the region. In this picture, you can see the team collecting, photographing, and measuring the colors of various rocks at a quarry near the Andes Mountains. Some items, such as rocks, seashells, soils, and plants were brought back to the laboratory where we organized them for the color measurement. During our travels, we also measured atmospheric colors. In this picture, you can see us measuring the color of a field through visual comparison with the NCS color chart. Additionally, we created watercolor paintings to capture a impression of the color atmosphere at the moment. These watercolors were exclusively created on site, never based on a photograph, because our primar primary focus was on capturing the chromatic essence of the moment. We created over 40 watercolor sketches in various locations across the region, by the sea in the fields amidst the Andes Mountains, within forest, amid snow, and more. I like to touch upon the significance of watercolor sketches. Watercolor sketches have a rich history. Artists like uh, Delacroix used them as means of jotting down notes, which they later translated into oil paintings. Similarly, some architects utilized sketches to observe the colors of a particular landscape. Figures like Le Corbusier and Yuhani Palasma, for example, employ colored pencils and watercolors to create their drawings and sketches. In our project, we used the, water, we used the watercolor technique to capture the chromatic atmosphere of the landscape from a deeply subjective <laughs> Each watercolor was crafted on site, as I said, where perch on a rock amid glasslands or beneath an umbrella, sometimes braving the cold, wind, or basking in the sun. These watercolors are not intended as, as artistic, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, are not intended as artistic masterpieces or decorative pieces but rather as subjective chromatic witnesses to the moment in which they were created. 
So, and now uh, Catalina will explain the methodology of the project. Thank you. Thank you, Elisa, for that wonderful introduction. And now our next speaker is Catalina Garcia. Catalina is a designer from the University of Austral uh, de Chile, who graduated in 2023. Her undergraduate project focused on the design of a graphic system to enhance the value of a heritage railway route. Currently, she works as a designer in a chocolate company. Uh, Catalina, welcome to Fluorescent Fridays. The screen is yours. Yes, thank you, Lina. Okay, so for the methodology of the project, we mainly use the following tools as shown in the picture, which are the NCS color index, the NCS color box, the NCS color atlas and the NCS color pin. This means that the natural color system color chart is based on the way humans perceive color, where the four elementary colors, such as red, yellow, green, and blue, play an important role. So the NCS color system has become the standard for various disciplines, such as design, and that's why we are using it as one of the main resources of this project. We also use another color chart, which is the muscle color chart, which is shown in the right side of the picture. Yes, there. And the muscle color chart is based on the muscle color system. It's a color chart we use mostly for analyzing rocks and also soils. And as the last instrument, which is important to mention, we use visual comparison. But what is visual comparison or, or how does this work? The visual comparison, we make we make visual comparison between the objects and the colors charts and the color charts, which are the NCS and the muscle color system. And that's why we say that the human eye is a very important instrument in this study, if not the most important instrument. So in the practice, it's always the same, the same person doing this comparison to get an accurate color based of the object we're watching. All the items we measured were divided in two major groups, which are first the objects, which consist of rocks, soils, and plants. We measured, we measured and took sample of those. And then the other main group is the atmospheres. We work with three types of atmospheres, the vegetal, skies, and waters. For measuring the objects in the lab, we did the visual comparison, as said earlier, but how do we measure the colors in the laboratory? So mainly by using the visual comparison between the objects and the two color charts, the Monsul and the NCS, we can measure the rocks, the soils with the Monsul color chart, and the plants with the NCS color chart. And for the measurement of ob objects outside the lab, we also use we also applied visual comparison for all types of objects and atmospheres using the color charts or sometimes the colored pin. So for the measurement of the objects with an instrument, in this case, the color pin, for plants, we use two main instruments depending on the surface of each species the NCS color chart and the NCS color pin. And in this case, the color pin was a chosen tool when the surface of the plant was smooth and big enough. As you can see in the pictures, the leaves and the flower have this smooth surface we can work the color pin on. So it works as a color reader and the color pin matches the color of the surface to, in this case, the objects, the flower and the leaf. 
and it shoots a white light that bounces off the surface, obtaining a color, which then is translated to an NCS color code visible on the app. As you can see on the phone there, there is the app of the NCS color pin, which is connected by Bluetooth. So the app shows two main color options, the real color on the seal app color system, the scale of color, and then also the nearest NCS sample available on the NCS Atlas. So by looking at the options, you can also see how accurate the color sample is to the object you're watching in real life. We can make sure it's accurate and then we can update the data onto our general information. With the measuring of the atmospheres, we created this device in a neutral color with a window, as you can see, which allows us to compare the atmosphere and the color at once. So we use the, for example, the vegetal atmosphere, such as a forest on the back, and we compare at the same time the color. We think it's the accurate one that matches the forest. And we have this little window to help us guide our instinct and our visual comparison. For the collected data, all the information collected in the fieldwork field work book was compiled into an Excel file, allowing us to visualize and organize all the information. So in that document, this document, this Google Sheet, we can see all the colors are registered with their codes, also geographic location, the transect in which the color was found, and other relevant data. For example, we can see the expedition, the file number. Each color has its own file number, so we can look it up. It's easier to find. And also, we worked with many with many color modes. For example, the NCS, we translated that code into RGB, say CMYK, and also hex codes, etc. So we have a larger, larger range of color that we can use in different formats and different mediums. In this investigation, we did more than 300 chromatic surveys, but those were reduced to 200 approximately colors corresponding to the objects and atmospheres, both together. And then those colors were selected on the NCS color box and later laid out and organized by chroma, as you can see in the pictures. So we look those up on the color box then collected the color swatches. We put the file number on each color, and then those became two color strips that we are using it for the exhibition. And the preparation of these samples, of these color samples, are for the creation of the color palettes, which Ingrid will explain now. Thank you, Catalina, for that wonderful presentation. Uh, now, our next guest and a good friend of mine is Ingrid Calvo Ivanovic. Ingrid holds a PhD in design research at the Politecnico de Milano and an MA in image studies, and is an assistant professor of the design department of Universidad de Chile. She's a color designer and researcher in the field of color, developing methodologies for study, teaching, and application in design, architecture, and art. Ingrid has presented at numerous conferences and workshops in America, Asia, Europe, and Oceania, and is a member of the executive committee of the International Color Association, editorial board of the Color Research and Application, and it is a member of the steering team of the Color Literacy Project. Ingrid, welcome to Fluorescent Friday. The screen is yours. Thank you very much, Lina. Uh, 
thank you also to to Elisa and and Catalina for the for the, introdu the introduction and the methodology. Um, now I I will explain a bit about how we passed from these interesting uh, collection data collection processes and analysis to um, the con the uh, con concrete in this and making this concrete in a color chart and some color palettes that people can use and that may have their local identity of this region of uh, of our country. I'm, I'm also Chilean, so uh, it, it is something also very much related to heritage of the place where where we where, where from where we are. Uh, next. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, we met uh, me and Elisa and, and and the laboratory in January this year. Uh, this was more or less the panorama you can see when when I arrived. Uh, we were dealing with a lot of colors. Uh, there there was a big uh, collection of color samples, uh, and. And I think that uh, also was interesting is that some of these colors were also related to more than one object or more than one atmosphere. So uh, this also may lead us also to understand that there were some colors that were more representative of the of the region because they appear uh, more time more times. Um, but anyway, uh, the the original sample or the original data collection you can see here uh, was uh, very much uh, complex. There were a lot of colors, and some of them were also very uh, similar. So uh, one of the first challenges was trying to make this um, big color data color uh, data collection of colors uh, something more specific and uh, something that. Can, people can easily use and they don't get uh, confused. Next. So the challenge here was trying to um, to arrive to or to have at the end of this uh, selection of the original color palette or color chart um, to something that could be more manageable, uh, a, a number of colors that people can deal with. Uh, and also a, a very interesting uh, thing is, and that I will explain in a few slides more, is some a group of colors that people can also name or they can easily recognize by their identity uh, in a way that this is going to be also used by humans. So having this huge number of NCS color codes is important and, and useful when you have to communicate these colors for the productive system. But when you have to communicate these colors among uh, humans, um, they may have also some uh, fantasy name as in the usual process you, you, can, you can get uh, when, you, when you are going to a painting store, for instance, and you can select a color that is a blue and it's called, for instance, um, sea blue or skies blue. So these fantasy names that may help people also to understand uh, where this color comes from and how they can easily identify it uh, when they're going to use them. So uh, this also was another challenge of, or, or, or one, one of the other explanations of why we needed to reduce this uh, original amount of the original number of colors uh, that the, the researchers got. So uh, the challenge here was to pass him by from uh, 189 colors that uh, the team collected uh, to a more manageable number that at the end uh, also we were working proportionally with the number, the original number to the to arrive to the final number. And the final color chart may, may have something like 50 colors, in this case it was 40, uh, 48 colors. Um, and uh, to, to have this the, 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 to, for the final chart. So uh, the way in which we were trying to do this, like to do this reduction of the original uh, color color chart and trying to not try not to lose the identity, local identity that this um, this color chart had. Uh, was through, uh, we were doing this reduction among, uh, through these two, um, according to these two main criteria that we defined. Uh, um, that is that the color, color, uh, color chart should be heterogeneous and representative, which is something that I will explain in, in a few slides. So next, please. 
So the first thing uh, I wanted to, be, uh, because this uh, Fluorescent Fridays event is very much uh, focused on students, I wanted to explain a bit more of how we were dealing with this challenge. So the first thing was trying to organize and sort the different colors uh, that, that the team got. So as you can see in the in the left picture, I am we are trying to sort them by hue. Uh, so, but the but the, the the original name you can give to 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 every color to each one of the colors, uh, and this was also a very interesting process. We were having uh, a discussion, but it was a fun discussion with Elisa, as you can see in the in the in the middle photo, because we were sometimes seen we, we were dealing, of course, with the issue of color relativity, and uh, we were uh, seeing the colors, and they were having one appearance when you were seeing them. Uh, on the table, and then when we were taking them to compare them with the with the um, different NCS chips, you can see here in the middle, um, we were seeing that some of them that were appearing to be brown when they were on the table, they actually were coming from a family of oranges in the orange in the in the in the NCS uh, system. So one part of this uh, of this process was a green uh, between us um so is are we are going are we going to consider this color as an orange color or are we going to consider this color as a brown color and you can you can think that this process may be very relative and not that uh, scientific but anyway uh, it is. It, it, is, it should be like this because we are talking about local colors, and we were also referring to the local uh, perceptions of value and meaning that uh, that we had in that area, or that we have as, as as part of the Chilean culture. So some colors that maybe were having a brownish appearance or a bluish appearance, but we know that this color has also some cultural meaning, uh, or then there and that it that it is perceived as a violet instead of a blue, for instance. So we were also considering and these different things and as you can see in the in the right photo we were also like trying to agree on which part of the of the different NCS sheets we were considering that they, those colors were part of the what we were going to call as orange and from maybe from the from the, the section you can see that is uh, that is the the drawing on, on the on the picture we were considering that that was orange and what uh what remains outside of that section uh we were considering uh as brown for instance so we were having very interesting conversation and decision taking decisions also uh on 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 on, on how we were going to arrange uh for for the first step these different colors in in, in 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 groups of hues or or main hues and to then so so then we can pass to the to the process of selecting the most important ones or the more representative ones and uh, and creating this final uh, color chart next please Okay, so I was saying before that we were working in this color chart reduction through two main uh, criteria. Uh, the first criteria is that this final color chart uh, should be heterogeneous. And this means that if we wanted this final color chart to be used for different, to, for, for all different purposes related to art and design and architect, architecture, uh, we were needing uh, colors of all different kinds. And what I'm saying, when I'm saying color of different kinds, I am uh, talking about uh, colors from, of different hues. Uh, so we were identifying the different types of hues we had, hue families we could we could we could get. Uh, but also colors of different values. So we were not only considering uh, colors that are very saturated and pure, but also colors that were light or very light and then medium light lightness and then um, dark uh, or low uh, lightness. So also different, different, uh, different lightnesses were considered. Then, as you can see in the middle, we were also considering colors that were having different saturations because for different purposes, you may need colors that are not that saturated and they are maybe more uh, dull or duller. Um, so we are, again, we were considering colors of high saturation, medium saturation and low saturation for the final creation of the chart. And we were also considering the perceived temperature which can also lead to lead to some uh, uses or uh, different purposes in which you may need colors that are more uh, that are warmer or and or colors that are colder. So we also were considering te temperature and 
for sure we were also adding to this color chart a group uh, an important group of neutrals or uh, achrom achromatic colors so uh, so we can have also that possibility when we are going to work with this color chart so this is uh, trying to understand uh, trying to make this heterogeneous uh, color chart where by considering these different categories uh, and properties of color next and the other criteria I was saying before was that the, this color chart should be representative. And this means that uh, if we had some proportion, initial original proportion in which colors were appearing in the first place. So we had, for instance, as you can see in the, in the picture, we had a lot of different greens. We have a, a, an important also group of browns, uh, but we were having only like three or two oranges. Um, so we wanted to keep, maintain that proportion for the final chart because the proportion in which colors appear for an, for a speci from a specific color collection, um, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's um, uh, in a way, it's the, the true of uh, how these colors are there in the, appear also in the, in the environment. So if in this, in this local environment, we don't have a lot of orange, the final chart may be also showing that, that uh, we are not only, uh, that, that, that we have only a few oranges because it's, it's the way in which colors are found uh, in the number or the amount in which colors are found uh, in, the, in the environment. So uh, this representativeness uh, where it was uh, worked uh, by trying to keep the proportion so if we were having uh in an initial 30 percent of greens then the final chart even if it is 48 colors we will have a final uh 30 percent of greens um too so uh so as you can see also in the picture we were trying to decide which green to 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 keep uh we were trying to uh, also con considering the first criteria that i just so, uh, show you we were just like crossing this information between heterogeneous and representative uh, character of the of the color chart and then we were choosing which colors to uh, left outside and which colors to include for uh, for this final uh, for the final chart next please so the final chart is this that you can see here and and as as i as you can see also here the the color we got in the biggest proportion the green is also kept this proportion is kept for the final for the final chart and the same for to all the other different hue families and um and the other important thing that i was mentioned before mentioning before also was the naming process and we were trying also to give some local names because these colors come from a local data collection. So we were trying to uh, prioritize the the even if, for instance, one color was um, was one one of the hues or the the, the final colors we had uh, was the color of all three or four or five elements. We were prioritizing the uh, one of the elements that the one the, the element that was related to a native um, species of this area of Chile. So, for instance, if uh, we had a color that was the color um, from roses, but also the color of uh, a specific flower that you can only find in Chile, uh, we were trying to prioritize that that name of the specific flower instead of roses, that is a species you can find in different places of the world. So. Um, so as you can see here, uh, in this, in for instance, we are um, the, the example uh, for this color naming process was, and uh, we can see here in, with the violet or purple uh, group. Um, in here, uh, we were uh, giving them names related to different flowers that were uh, considered for the study. So we have morado flor de la pluma, which is a very native species, species uh, morado flor de chilco, and morado flor de magnolia, which are uh, plants or trees you can find in this area and their native species. So, and, and you can have also the name of them in, in, in English. We were doing this also because if this color chart is going to be spread and disseminated in the different in different parts of the world, which is also one of the ideas of the project, uh, um, the, it, this color chart is going to be also like a, an ambassador of uh, the colors you may find in this area of Chilean Patagonia. And the idea was also to give some visibility to these native species and to these local values. Uh, that, that, and that maybe some people are going to uh, know this specific flower because they are going to 
um, be using this specific color chart and the, this in this way we are also spreading our natural heritage uh, for the different purposes and for different people that is going to use them all around the world. Next, please. And after having the the, the color chart, uh, we were working with the process of palette creation because it was one of the final outputs that the project was um, promising and for for finding uh, for for uh, funding. Um, so uh, for palette creation, we were working with uh, color combination strategies, um, but the 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 canonical ones, uh, the the ones that comes from uh, from nineteenth. Uh, century and 20th century, but we were uh, kind of critically uh, changing them and adding some conditions for them in order so we can test them and see how we can update this knowledge for uh, future color education, which is also part of, of what I do in, 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 the, in, in the color literacy project with one of my with some of my colleagues that are also here as an audience. So um, what we were doing was trying to consider color palette or color combination strategies, uh, but uh, they are usually and, and traditionally only based in hue, most of them. Uh, we were trying to add the other two color properties, so uh, value and saturation. Um, and uh, we were trying to give the, these other two color property, properties some, as conditions for the canonical ways of uh, working with color combination strategies. So we were working with harmonies uh, of three, three types of harmonies, so achromatic, monochromatic, and polychromatic, mostly an, uh, analog colors, and then uh, or adjacent colors. And then uh, for the contrast strategies, where we were considering the complementary relationship, which is kind of uh, an, an uh, a, 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 a relation, a color relationship in itself, not related to harmony and contrast necessarily, but we were just classifying it here just to test it. And we were working with the contrast of hue and temperature and proportion, but all of them, uh, to all of them, we were adding these conditions. So I, I'm going to I'm going to explain it to what, what I mean with the condition. So uh, we were, for instance, choosing a monochromatic harmony, but we were given the condition of all colors should be of the same value. Or uh, we were working with the same monochromatic harmony, but all the con all with the condition that all colors should have uh, different saturations. So we were trying to also uh, give some visibility to the importance of the other two color properties for color combination and color selection. So as you can see in the example in the lower part of the slide, we have uh, the palette 2J, which is colors of all colors are from of different temperatures, but they should have medium value and should have medium saturation. So with this condition, we are also making that the color combination strategy becomes more complex. And we are also in a way testing if our color chart is well made, if it, it is allowed to produce a very specific color um, request, and uh, and if, if we could do all these different color palettes with just using this color chart, is a, it, it could be, we could say that it's a color chart that is prepared to be spread in the world and, and for people to use it for different purposes. Another example is the palette to be color coming from different hue families with high value and, and, and low saturation and so on and so on. So next, please. So I, uh, now you will see some, some color palettes we were doing with these conditions. So in here you see uh, palette to C, which, which is different hue families, uh, colors coming from different hue families, so colors that have different names, uh, but all of them should have, uh, should have a high saturation. Um, or uh, then we have in, in the middle uh, palette to P, which is two colors coming from dif two different hue families. So in this case, greens and pink, uh, and they should be combined in different proportions. So a, a bigger proportion of, of uh, greens and just a small portion of pink, and they should have similar saturation. Um, and then in palette 2R, we have two different hue families again, uh, with different uh, different proportions, and but they should have similar values. So these conditions also make that the, the color palettes are not the typical color palettes you can get when you are using, for instance, the, uh, the 
numerous uh, color tools you may find in internet when you are trying to choose colors and combine colors for, for a project. Next, please. So uh, with this, uh, with all of this, our uh, color chart is the one that you are seeing here. Uh, you may notice easily that it has different hues, different saturations, different uh, lightnesses, uh, colors of different temperatures. And, uh, and we were, as you can see here, also keeping the proportion of, uh, of the different colors we got. And uh, on, the, on the right part of the slide, you see some exercises made uh, by, uh, by, by students uh, that uh, they were um, testing our, our um, color chart and the color combination strategies we were testing also uh, for the palette creation. This next. And uh, what I'm uh, the last thing that I'm, that I'm showing you is um, uh, how this color combination. And this is a very important thing that I wanted to, in a way, show because uh, this is a way in which the research, color research, informed the uh, color teaching and color education. So from research, we from this idea of creating these color combination strategies, uh, I've been uh, I, I, I'm been still. Uh, developing these uh, color combination strategies for teaching and uh, also uh, for uh, an art exhibition that I, I will be doing at, at the, by the end of the year. And uh, as you can see in the in the left part, you see a Google a spreadsheet um, with all the different variables you can have. It's a matrix with all the different variables you can have. So starting from the different hue strategies and then what happens if we have monochromatic colors with uh, medium uh, medium lightness and high saturation so all the different possibilities you can make to, you may have just to create very very different color palettes uh, so far i've been founding uh, more than 100 color strategies that is super it's a lot the different seven eaten contrast and and, and and harmonies and uh, you can see on the right part uh, a way in which i this information of the of the left part i passed it uh, or I, I made it uh, as a textual information for students to work with it so the different rules of color combination we may test. And this, um, these rules have already been tested for, with the students in Milan, in Politecnico di Milano, and also uh, what, what is going to be shown next in the, uh, in the course of, uh, in, sorry, in, the, in Elisa's class with an exercise we did with, uh, with the students that are going to be showing next. So um, I'm going to leave the stage to the students, but what we were doing here was giving them a specific color combination rule and asking them to, uh, to work with, the, with those colors and to, pro, to test different ways in which they could apply those colors to a design. They were working with tiles and patterns, so they will explain better uh, what is the result of this exercise that we were doing? Thank you, Ingrid, for such a wonderful presentation. Um, our next speakers, I'm going to present them all together, um, uh, are the students participating in this validation. Uh, Florencia Rodriguez is the first one, and she's a third year student at the School of Design of the Universidad Austral de Chile. For her, color is a rush of energy. Then Diego will show us his work. He's a third year student at the School of Design at the Universidad Austral de Chile. For him, color is the feelings found in everything around us. And then lastly, uh, Genesis Alvarado, who is a four-year student at the School of Design at the Universidad Austral de Chile. For her, colors are different energies and sensations. Uh, chicos, welcome to Fluorescent Fridays. The screen is yours. Thank you, Lina. Well, uh, like Miss Ingrid said, we use a chart of colors. And in my case, the rule combination I get was the number six, which are the monochromatics with a variety of brightness and saturations among them. And the pattern I choose was the flowers one, which is have four layers. The next one. In my first palette, I use a yellow one combination 
which I have uh, one darker, this saturate colored, which is Encino and Antonio, that in my first variety I put in the background to make a pop out of the flowers. And the other three, they're part of the, the flowers. In the second variety, I try to make a elegant pattern, which I put my light color Flor de la Cicuta to the background and my two middle colors to the part of the, the flower and el Encino de Antonio to the little spots in the flower half. And the third variety, I make like a weird combination as you can see, which is um, a huge contrast because it has in the background a uh, fleur de retamo, which is a yellow desaturate color. And the part of the flowers have my darker colors. The next one. In my second palette, I use a pinkish one, which in the first variety, I use um, fleur de nipa, which is my second color saturate. It, and the flor de magnolia to be part of the flower with a background of a light desaturate colored. In the second one, I I changed the order, which I I use my saturate dark color, flor de nipa, and to the part of the flowers I put my <clears throat> my darker and my uh, light color to the flowers. And my third one, I try to get a look of it, like more desaturate. Uh, thank you to the <clears throat> to the saturate and light one color to the background. And the other two are part of the flower. This is next. And my third palette is a green one, which I have uh, three desaturate colors and one saturate, which uh, my darker color, Olivo, Olivillo de Chan Chan, is my darker one. <clears throat> the Musgo en el Tume is my saturate, and the other two are my brightness and desaturate colors which in my first variety, I put them in the part of the flowers, which is kind of camouflage with the background because it's a desaturated color, except it for the second variety of this pattern because I put the, my darker color to the background. That's it, thank you. Diego? Hi, everyone. Uh, well, I actually used the same floral pattern to work with, uh, but my rule was number 42, double complementary, low luminosity, and saturation. It was kind of hard because the chart has not much uh, dark colors, but I was able to find these seven. So I have to combine them all to create three different palettes. And in the next one, um, this is the first combination. Uh, I have this Verde Hoja de Manzana, Azul eh, Cuesta Los Añiques, Café Piedra de la Unión, y Verde Hoja de eh, Tepa. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so you... Um, it's actually the background color that uh, the important here. Uh, I think um, depending on the color I can put in the back, uh, the details can be more, uh, uh, I don't know how to say it, but como en la primera capa se resaltan más. Highlighted. Um, but um, the 
more yellow greeny uh use it for little details i don't know if you can see in the presentation but are like little dots so this is my first one uh, the second um in the second i use the same two colors that the first one but i changed the green and the red so I can create more contrast uh, between the, the details of the pattern. So uh, the result is so different. Uh, this is like more elegant or something like that. The purple uh, is like the most uh, saturated color in all this, even if it's a dark color. But as you can see, the result is completely different. And the other one, I choose these uh, like purple gray. Uh, and it actually seems like the pattern changed, but it's the same. It's only that the color, the combination colors uh, create like this illusion. Uh, but it's also so different from the other two palettes. So. Uh, the results I create were actually really uh, amazing for me. Uh, and I think that uh, the palettes, even if I have mentioned it, uh, I have so uh, not so much colors. I can, I was able to work with, uh, with three different combinations and I think they are a great result. But that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Diego. And finally, Hennessy. Hello. Good afternoon. My name is Hennessy Salvarado. And I use rule number 62, contrast of proportion with different brightness and saturation among them. My process. First. I use the medium gray background to neutralize the color, and then the color wheel to organize them in a space. Second, I select three pairs of complementary colors and their variation. Finally, color of different brightness and saturation among them are selected. The color combination and design will use are these. Next, please. In my first palette, I used green tones and a dark purple tones. The color used were verde hoja manzano, verde musgo en el tume, verde campo de trigo, verde musgo lago calafquén, morado flor de chilco. Next, please. In the second palette, I used blue tones and a complementary orange tone. The color used were Azul Cielo de Chaiwin, Verde Mar de los Molinos, Azul Mar de Chan Chan, Azul Cuesta los Añiques, and Amarillo Flor de Matico. Next, please. In my last palette, I used light yellow tones and a dark blue tone. The color used were Naranja Flor de Coralillo, Café Piedra de Niebla, Amarillo Flor de Aromo, Amarillo Flor de Calafate, Amarillo Encino en Otoño, and Azul Mar de Chan Chan. Thank you. Does anyone have a question? Thank you, Kennedy, uh, for that wonderful presentation. Now I would like to invite to all our speakers to turn on their cameras. And on behalf of the Fluorescent Friday team, I would like to thank you, all of you, for sharing such an inspiring presentation. Now, we will have a panel discussion with all the presenters that we moderated by Luan. Uh, please don't forget to put your uh, questions in the chat box uh, for the, this panel discussion and Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you, Lena. And on behalf of everyone, I think a round of applause for everybody uh, from all of us. It was extraordinary um, as we thought would happen. There's no doubt about how important this is. 
And as you can see in the chat box, uh, we are all responding, I think, just so favorably. So I wanted to, I just thought I might start uh, in this in this conversation and ask each of the students, uh, starting with uh, Catalina, what your biggest surprise was. I mean, for you to have par participated in this extraordinary project is amazing, but for each of you, that what is your most, you know, the biggest surprise and I guess the biggest takeaway? So Catalina, if you would just, enlighten us yes it's been great because i started off as a student first on this project like seven months ago and now as a designer it's also kind of new and exciting to learn and to broaden my perspective on color like it never stops growing so it feels nice to keep learning about color keep working with color and also sharing about color with other people. Yes, um, and we look forward to seeing what you do with this going forward as you are the next color ambassadors um, for sure. Um, and how about Florencia, how about you? Um, well, uh, this was um, like a new experience. It was really, um, entertainment to make <laughs> um exactly and and i guess uh, you have another year right it left at the university You're yes i have two years more wow mm -hmm. and so you have a lot of uh, new material uh, and tools uh, to going forward uh, right that you did not have before this project yes <laughs> that's exciting um diego uh, well, I was also really excited to work with this. I mean, I've been working with Professor Elisa for many years and we always use like the regular colors in all the classes, but now we have like this uh, more identity colors from Valdivia and all the places around the city. So it's really great and amazing. Yes, and uh, so I would imagine just you, what you said is just making me think of another question while you're on that subject. So did I would imagine you also learned a whole lot about about the area around you, about the country, just having this experience. Could you talk a little bit about that, just going out and just really looking at the the area around you in a, in a different way, in a new light? Uh, well, I mean, like all Chile, we have like so much nature around us and it changed every season in different cities. So we have like now working in only one region, but I think it will be great also work with the same project in other cities. I think we can make so much with all the nature and surroundings we have all around the country. So it's great. So you get to share a lot about people for others to hear, I think one of the one things that we're really excited about is the idea that, that you could share your heritage and your culture and you know and, and not just have it that you get to experience, but you get to share it with others and, and have this really wonderful way of, of doing that. And uh, Genesis, how about you? Um, nothing. This is... Um... Wonderful experience. This. Yes, and could you know, and your your palette, all the palettes were really interesting. I had a question since um, for for you about that. When you all got to you, you got one of the um, uh, um, a rule number, right? Each of you had a rule, uh, and then the rule had certain cr criteria on that. And then when you were able, once you had the rule, how did you? pick your colors, because you had a lot of colors to choose from. Um, wait and try, translate the conversation. Um, or, or Ingrid? Ya, yeah, it, it's uh, um, cómo seleccionaron los colores. Creo que es una re una pregunta para para todos en general. Quien quiera responder, cómo cómo fueron seleccionando los colores con la con la regla del color que se les dio. 
¿Alguien quiere compartir cómo lo hicieron? Uh, well, I think Genesis have kind of complicated the question, but um, for my case, to choose the colors, um, I doesn't think a lot about it, but um, I mean, because I wasn't started to an idea to make a palette of four colors, I just start to make a uh, separate the colors of the chart to the hues. And then when I saw the, the pattern that it has four layers, I try to make a, to critique, like which one I need to keep and which one node. So um, that's what I get. <laughs> and I, of course, to according with the rule that I get. Mm -hmm. That is so interesting. And and Diego, on your palette, you had a really dark, yours, you had the darker, it was gorgeous too, that you, could you talk a little bit about that for you, what choosing the colors and what happened because you had that rule? Well, uh, as I say, it was hard because the complete chart has like really saturated colors and bright colors. And so it had like less option, but it was, amazing the results actually the the combinations i could create with the seven colors i picked and um, well it was more like um i make like a list with the shades color so i could pick the the last one and use it for apply to the rule that i've got that is that's so revolutionary, really, to be able to do that. This is amazing. And I know we just, we have just a couple minutes, and I thought if we had, we were going to ask Elisa, could you tell us uh, right now where you are and uh, show us a little bit about the the exhibition, uh, and so we can hear about that, and maybe you'll we'll be able to see it once you do it. So, well, uh, we will uh, do the exhibition in two weeks uh, on the 28th of May. So we are preparing. Well, my assistant went away. She she had to go to the dentist. But this is my office. Uh, I have many colors here. The color strips we worked with, with um, uh, Ingrid. So uh, we are, I made a very big uh, NCS wheel. Maybe you can see here uh, I, 40, R, and every number. So it's the NCS circle. Um, and that's because I will make a very big color circle in the gallery, in the art gallery, with all colors of the project. So I divided them in the most saturated color here. For example, this one, uh, uh, more than saturation more than 50 in this uh, circle. The inner circle is between 40 and 10, I think. This is saturation five or 10, and these are the gray tones. So it will be a very big circle. On the other hand, I am, well, we have here many, the calendar and money that I must <laughs> <laughs> clear. And this is, um, I don't know how to say it, but it's a very bad uh, printing, uh, but that is the idea. I will make 13 of these panels with a color, with a photo of the flower, for example, and then a sample of NCS paper. So it was very bad, bad, um, se dice? Impreso, mala impresión, mala calidad? Como se dice? Bad quality, yeah. Yes. So I'm, I am trying to find a better paper. So uh, that's a very good impression, I think, uh, uh, quality. And here um, I have to um, pegar, Visakman. How, how do you say pegar? Glue it. To fix uh, a paper from the NCS here, from the same color of this flower. Well, we will have aquarelle, uh, watercolors also, and many other things. So I'm working also on weekends for this, but I'm very happy, but a lot, a lot of work. Oh. Wait, yes. Elisa, until when when is the exhibition going to be? 28 de mayo. Oh, and until until when? Huh? 
two weeks. 28th of May, yeah. Yeah, 28th okay. of May. And until when? Uh, it's here. How in long Madrid. is it? Yeah, but how long will it stay? Uh, two weeks. Two, two weeks. weeks. Maybe. See, Luan, now we, you have to come and we'll go to Olivia. Okay, I think we'll yeah. <laughs> Everybody on this call, field trip to see the show. Let's go. We'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, and um, that reminds me then, I, as we're wrapping up now, um, can you, would it be possible for you to share that a link? A lot of us are really, you know, we're excited to see more about the exhibition. So if there is a link to the show and maybe, I don't know if you're going to have a, video so we could actually see what it looks like a little bit but anything that you can do um if you share it with us when we once we do the recording and and re release that to our participants uh, it'd be great if there was a link so we could actually see it because Good i idea. think i would yeah. love to, uh, yeah would that work for you yeah i, I um, just put in the chat the link for the instagram uh on the project, and then i think it's going to, everything is going to be communicated there right Oh, great. And we'll, we will be able to, yeah, we want to share that. Um, Ingrid, could you put uh, uh, the natural color system? Um, I just wanted, before we head out, that has been, a, you know, something that one of the tools that you have used as well as Munsell, but that is, I know that, you know, in the United States, um, I've, I've been exposed to it um, only, you know, the University of Texas. One time I learned about that and I couldn't believe how exciting it was to learn about it. The fact that you all use that um, and it's it's a wonderful tool. It'd be this is something that's going to be helpful for all of us to learn. So, um, I think um, is there anything else pressing that we need to we can talk about? We could stay all day, and um, but otherwise I will turn it over to um, on the color. Yeah, we'll put the exhibit on the color console website. That's great, and also probably color literacy. But anyway, I would I'm going to turn it back to um, after just thanking you once again, but turning it back to Lena to uh, to, to bid everybody adieu and give you a little bit of final information. All right. Well, just to close up this wonderful presentation, I want to thank you for joining us today. And our next Fluorescent Friday event will be in October. We encourage you to sign up for the newsletter and or become a member of the Color Council to find out which university will be illuminated in the Fluorescent Friday spotlight. Thank you. Uh, everyone for joining us today and have a great fluorescent Friday.